Keynote 091 is one of these two trials which have been to date presented, which look at the addition of immunotherapy after standard of care treatment of stage 1b to stage 3 in small cell lung cancer. Uh, the idea is these patients uh, undergo and benefit from a complete resection of their tumor. They receive chemotherapy. Uh, in in pulse trial, it was optional, uh, maximum of four cycles. But uh, after that, they are randomized between one year of pembrolizumab or placebo. Okay. This trial was looking at two dual coprimary endpoints. This dual coprimary endpoints, dual means that if one of two endpoints is positive, the trial is positive huh, by statistical design. So the first one was disease-free survival. In this uh, whole population, ITT, and the secondary, the second dual primary endpoint was um, the DFS in high PDL1, the ones with a TPS score of more than 50%. So while the whole population was statistically significant in terms of prolonging the DFS with a significant p value, so something which is paradigm changing, uh, the subgroup which is supposed to benefit the most of pembrolizumab, the high PDL1, more than 50% PDL1, did not show a benefit, not a statistically significant benefit. So tomorrow my discussion is to try to understand why. All the trials we have in immunotherapy show an incremental effect of immunotherapy if you go to higher level of PDL1. Kind of a proportional thing, right? The more PDL1, the more your immunotherapy works. So why would it not be the case in the PERS, uh, the Keynote 091 trial? So that's what we really dissected uh, in this presentation. First, we looked at patient characteristics. Are they different in the high PDL1 as compared to the ITT? No. Then we looked at safety. Is it different? No. Uh, then we look at exposure to the drug, difference in timing, duration. No. So okay. So we had to go back to the Kaplan-Meier curves. So what is interesting is the incremental of efficacy in the adjuvant setting of the pembrolizumab is seen according to PDL1. So what I mean is high PDL1, more than 50 percent. The curve does better than the other subgroups of PDL1 in the pembrolizumab arm. So it's really, you can see very visibly the incremental. What is very surprising is this movement up, if you want, this benefit seen in high PDL1 is also seen in the placebo arm. And the reason why the lung community is surprised is usually PDL1 doesn't is not prognostic. So when you are in the placebo arm, it shouldn't change at all the curve. And if anything, some data sets say it's negatively prognostic. So when you have PDL1 and you receive chemo or nothing, your prognosis is worse. And here it moves up. So it might be a combination of factor. We can't find one. But the reason why this subgroup is not behaving as expected is because of the overperformance of the standard arm and not about the performance of PEMBRO, which as expected does better in high PDL1. So the answer and the conclusion to this abstract is to say you can give PEMBRO to all. PEMBRO has the expected efficacy.